Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. This is a seminar of the Harvard China Project on Energy, Economy, and Environment based in the Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences at Harvard. Uh, my name is Chris Nielsen. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, a seminar today by Professor Li Zheng live from Hunan uh, in China. Uh, so it's 10 o'clock at night there, and he's uh, graciously agreed to give a talk um, uh, late at night and in his time. Um, before I introduce him, I want to um, talk a little bit about the logistics of the, of the, of the, of the Zoom call. Um, so we're trying to do our seminars as much like in-person seminars as we can. And so what uh, I mean by that is that um, they're organized so that the, the speaker talks for about 45 minutes. You hold questions to the end, and then we have a Q&A session at the end where you will be able to ask some, at least some of you will be able to ask questions directly yourself um, using the Zoom function. But the important thing about this is that um, uh, we need your cooperation in keeping your microphones muted. Your microphones have to be muted until we get to the Q&A period and then only if you're asked uh, uh, to ask a question. And the way that you signify that you wanna ask a question is you raise your hand in, um, in it's usually in the participants uh, icon where you see the uh, raise hand uh, um, option. And we'll be monitoring for who wants to ask a question. The other thing I need to mention is that we are recording the seminar and uh, we anticipate uh, posting it on our website. So Professor Li Zheng is the Executive Vice President of the Institute for Climate Change and Sustainable Development at Tsinghua University. For those of you who don't know, this is a recently, relatively recently established institute at Tsinghua that is at the university level, which is a uh, somewhat different um, distinctive uh, aspect of it compared to a sort of a school-based uh, center at, at Tsinghua. He's also a professor in the Department of Energy and Power Engineering. Um, his research interests include energy systems analysis and decarbonization, performance modeling, simulation and optimization of power plants, but he's also leading several national and international technical and policy programs in energy and climate fields. His background is in, is in thermal engineering, he got his PhD at the Tsinghua Department of Thermal Engineering and then became a faculty in the department, faculty member in the department, full professor in the year 2000. Uh, he was named a Changjiang scholar in 2008. That's a very uh, top uh, uh, award for uh, uh, professors in China. And then was the Dean of the department from 2011 to 2017. He's also the founder of the Tsinghua BP Clean Energy um, Center, which uh, some of you will know about. It's been around since uh, 2003. So one last thing I wanna mention uh, uh, about Li Zheng is, um, <clears throat> you know, he's very well known at universities around the world. We got a very good response to this uh, seminar. In fact, um, he has contacts with people you know, uh, 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 everywhere. And he has contacts with unit, I think at least four units at Harvard, <laughs> uh, not just ours, but uh, several units at the, at, at the Kennedy School, including the Belfer Center, the Ash Center. I'm sure he knows uh, uh, Professor Rob Stevens. Um, and similarly, I assume at MIT, Berkeley and so forth. And um, <clears throat> Mike McElroy and I have, I, I don't know if you remember this, uh, Professor Lee Jung, but uh, Mike McElroy and I first met you, I think at least 15 years ago. I remember having dinner with you uh, and a couple of other people. And um, many years ago when uh, Liu Bingjiang was with you. Yeah, Liu, yeah, right, with Liu Bingjiang. <laughs> yeah, maybe so it could have been, it could have been longer than that. Um, but we have had so many discussions with you and it's, it's often about sort of programmatic issues, these, these strategies about developing you know, centers and collaborations and organizing of workshops. And it's, it's, this is important stuff, but what we have actually had less opportunity to do than we would like is a chance to hear from you about your own research, the research in your own group. And so part of the um, objective of this seminar was in fact to, 
to uh, create an opportunity for you to present and for all of us to learn about the research in your own group. Now, I think you're also going to talk about some of the larger picture things too, but uh, we're very much um, looking forward to uh, hearing about the modeling work in your own group. So, Professor Lee Jung. So thank you, Chris. So I'm um, uh, thank you for introduction. Um, so I'm very honored uh, uh, to be invited uh, to give a lecture in, by uh, in Harvard University. So so I appreciate Harvard China project, especially Professor McCroy and Chris uh, for your kind invitation. And uh, as you mentioned that I have a, a lot of friends in, in Harvard University. So, so I cannot see the picture, but uh, uh, I realize that uh, uh, I'm very uh, uh, happy to have uh, uh, Hojen, Professor Jiang Hojen, Professor uh, Dan Shrug, etc. Uh, and those friends to, to attend uh, uh, my lecture. So this gave me a lot of uh, encouragement. And before I start, I also want to say that uh, uh, because it's COVID-19, I haven't speak English for a long time. So hopefully my, my English can make you understood. So if I have some, some stop or pause, please forgive me. And uh, okay. So that, 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 uh, as Chris has just mentioned, that uh, we have you have a lot of contact me with uh, contact uh, connection uh, discussion with me on, on logistics uh, stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, so I would like to show some some of my studies. So today I will talk uh, about uh, the our the study uh, in my group on the uh, modeling of energy system. And uh, besides, we also do a lot. Uh, uh, I also do a lot of uh, modern work on, on technical uh, systems, technical uh, facilities and systems. So I, divide, I developed uh, uh, the simulation technology of circulating fluid death, fluid death bed, boilers and the power plants. And I, uh, I got a China National uh, Award for, for this contribution. So that's kind of dynamic modeling, which can be used to, to, to train uh, operators and also to study the, the control algorithms, etc. So, so, so just to give you some impression. So today I will talk about uh, some climate uh, related uh, stuff. So the title is uh, Decarbonization Pathways of China's Power Sector. So I will basically I will talk two things. The first, uh, the uh, two parts. The first part is about uh, uh, ICC, uh, a long-term strategy study for China uh, uh, conducted by ICCSD. So that's, that helped that helped China to make decision on, on this uh, carbon, carbon peaking and the carbon neutrality. So that's, a, uh, uh, give a, I think that's very important. So the, so the first part I'll talk about uh, some, some, some information about this uh, research. Secondly, I will talk about the decarbonization pathways of China's power sector. That's the was light uh, part of the first uh, project I mentioned and led by uh, by me. And uh, I think you're familiar with uh, President Xi's uh, pledge. That was a very uh, great, I would say, that, that was made in uh, September 22nd. Uh, that's the first time for China to uh, to promise carbon neutrality before 2016. And uh, uh, to make this decision, to, to make this decision, ICCSD has made, uh, helped, help to, to uh, in uh, doing some background support. And the, the uh, so actually this, uh, uh, Long-term strategy study was con conceived in 20, in 2018 when global climate governance was in the harsh situation. I, th I think you can remember that uh, in in 2018, uh, the global uh, climate uh, governance had uh, met a lot of challenge. 
and uh, uh, because uh, trade uh, friction between China and the U.S., China's economy was was also uh, difficult. Met a lot of diffi the, uh, uh, challenge. So it, and uh, so at that time, uh, uh, that was uh, almost the beginning for China to make its uh, 15th, uh, 15th uh, five-year plan, uh, 14th, 14th five-year plan. And uh, because it's diff difficult difficulties, so 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 we met a lot a uh, big choice. Should we continue to take active uh, policies and profiles to, to tackle with climate change, or should we, we, we be more conservative? So so that I, I think that's that's the uh, uh, situation we met at that year. So that's why we conducted this long term uh, long term strategy study. And trying to to uh, to propose to government some some advices. So it's at the beginning of the, uh, 2019, so ICICSD organized more than 20 prestigious institutes and think tanks in China to study and uh, to propose the targets and policy options for national, middle, and long-term strategies. So uh, as I mentioned later, so this is not uh, merely climate uh, strategy study. So we, we organized uh, experts from all aspects and uh, to try to study uh, uh, multi-dimension of China society and the economy, so including uh, economy, including uh, urbanization, including trade, and including sectors like uh, industry, uh, transportation, uh, building, and energy, and especially power sector. And also uh, a lot of things like inf 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 infrastructure, uh, environmental policy, uh, and uh, climate uh, policies, etc. So this is uh, this this is a framework uh, uh, we designed at the very beginning. And uh, so, so the guidelines and the over, overall design of the of this project have the, the following points. The first one is uh, it is as I mentioned, it's not merely a climate strategy or, or Energy strategy. It is uh, trying to be a comprehensive uh, development strategy, and uh, so so we, we we try to to attain two goals at the same time. So internally to re to realize our social development target, and internationally to uh, try to be a, uh, to be a, in alignment with with the Paris Agreement pathways. That means uh, to meet the climate goals Paris Agreement requires. And uh, uh, we compared four scenarios. Uh, they are policy scenario. That means implementing uh, the original 2030 uh, NDC target. And then the second uh, scenario is the reinforced policy scenario. That means we, we, we tentatively try, we tentatively test to increase the NDC target. And then the third and the fourth uh, scenario are a uh, two degree scenario and the 1.5 scenario, which are in alignment with uh, uh, Paris agreement requirement. So that means uh, um, to, to set up target and trying to uh, look, look, look backwards to, to see what, what are needed, what, what are the impact. And uh, we also, uh, uh, think to propose two stage strategy. That means uh, uh, because the inertia of the economy. So, so we, we try to, to propose uh, to have a two stage of acceleration. So from the first, uh, first stage up to the year 2030 to 2035, we increase the, the, the reduction of carbon uh, faster than the previous stage. And then, uh, then after the peak, peak carbon peaking, to uh, uh, suggest a further acceleration. So this is the, uh, the two phase strategies I mentioned here. And uh, so then finally the target. Why we do that? We're trying to give uh, some uh, proposals based on our study. So including the the climate and energy saving target in the 14th five-year plan and recommend, uh, 
recommendations for strengthening and updating the 2030 NDC targets. And uh, finally, it's a recommendation for China's goals and strategies for long-term uh, low emission development strategy by 2050. These are the targets. And uh, uh, you know the latest stories. So I think uh, our studies uh, gave, gave a, a very important impact. So uh, this is the energy, energy trajectory, uh, energy pathways, and also carbon emission pathways up to the year 2050. 20, uh, you can see that energy, so in, in for these four scenarios, the energy uh, consumption difference are not, not large, not large, but I mean, try But uh, the carbon emission behavior are quite different. So this means uh, the energy uh, mix are, are totally different in these four scenarios. But for the two scenarios uh, in, in alignment with Paris Agreement targets, the carbon uh, emission at uh, 2050 are, very, uh, are quite, uh, quite, quite low. And finally, we, after uh, describing this uh, form, uh, pathways, we, pro we made our proposal that that's what I mentioned, two states of, of acceleration to reach uh, to, uh, carbon, to peak carbon before 2030, and then to go further uh, with orientation uh, in alignment with the Paris Agreement pathway requirements. So this is the, the, the shadow part means. And to, to achieve, to achieve uh, such a kind of goal, the energy, energy uh, structure and the mix should be changed very much. So, uh, so here I uh, show some, some uh, results. So for this two degree scenario, the, the, non, the share of non-fossil energy will be 70% compared to, the, to today's uh, 80, 85 percent uh, of fossil energy, so that's quite quite different. And for this uh, one point five uh, degree scenario, the share of non fossil energy will be will be eighty five percent. That means uh, fossil energy, including coal, oil, and the natural gas, will be only fifteen percent. So this is exactly the reverse uh, share of of today's uh, uh, energy mix. And then about uh, uh, carbon emission. So the carbon emission will, uh, will peak before 1030 and uh, decrease quickly after uh, carbon peaking. So in the two, two degree scenario, uh, the net CO2 emission will be about uh, 2.1, 2.2 billion tons. That's uh, corresponding to uh, 1.5 tons per capita. And then for this uh, 1.5 degree scenario, uh, the net, net CO2 emission will be zero. That means uh, the, the left, the left uh, carbon emissions, uh, carbon dioxide emissions will be, will be off-site by, by uh, natural sinks, natural sinks and uh, uh, artificial uh, sink te technologies. However, it is difficult to, to eliminate, eliminate uh, non-CO2 uh, greenhouse gases and all. And uh, we also found that uh, for this 1.5 degrees scenario, that's a very costive and uh, quite, quite difficult to, to, to realize. And uh, to, uh, here are some, some uh, uh, data estimation about uh, invest, uh, about investment. So for, for this two degree scenario, about uh, 100 trillion RMB will be required. That's uh, uh, corresponds to about 1.5 to 2.0% of uh, accumulative GDP. And for, for this 1.5 degree, 
about uh, 138 trillion RMB will be required for, for energy-related infra infrastructure investment. It, it, it is higher than 2.5% uh, percent of the uh, accumulated GDP. However, we also uh, uh, review that uh, because more renewable energy will be uh, employed, so th there are more more jobs, uh, more jobs and uh, employment, and also help China uh, to go to uh, uh, low carbon, high quality economic uh, development. So that's uh, also just a big big cost, but uh, the direction is that the uh, is deserved and uh, uh, that's the right direction to, to pursue. So this, this is roughly my uh, uh, first uh, first part of my uh, presentation. Uh, I did not get uh, any feedback. Uh, am I okay for this way, Chris? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, just, just I uh, think uh, go forward to your second part, okay. and, and we'll and we'll have questions at the end. Okay. So then, uh, so the, uh, I just give an overview about uh, our uh, the, uh, the the whole picture, and then second part I will give a uh, uh, particularly the decarbonization pathways of China's power sector. And uh, this is a, a, a model framework uh, we established to uh, to save, to optimize uh, the social uh, the total cost uh, uh, up to the year 2050 for the power sector, including uh, both uh, operational cost, OPEX and uh, CAPEX. And the, the principle of the model is to uh, try to opt, uh, optimize, uh, minimize the, the total cost uh, of the uh, for, for the power sector. So, so uh, on, uh, on the left side, it, it, uh, it shows the inputs. The starting point is the existing uh, power fleet. And uh, also then to the destination about a future demand year by year demand up to the year 2050 and also policy targets like uh, the, uh, carbon emissions by the year 2050 and there are also uh, some assumptions about uh, uh, fuel, uh, coal about uh, cost and the efficiency of different technologies so we, we made our best estimation about uh, future cases so so the efficiency uh, and the costs are not constant. And uh, also uh, resource endowment, like a uh, temporal change of uh, wind and solar uh, resources. And uh, then we considered all kinds of constraints, like, uh, like basic uh, stuff like supply and demand balance and uh, uh, intermittency of, of uh, resources like wind and solar and the, the cost of, of fuel supply, like uh, coal, like uh, natural gas, etc. And uh, we also uh, considered a lot of details about uh, the uh, technical uh, behavior of, of, uh, uh, of all the, uh, nearly all, all, all the energy technologies. We considered uh, 14 plus one uh, power generations. I, I will show them later. And then we also considered uh, the policy target. And then the, uh, the, the optimization result, including the, the, the compensation of, uh, power, of power fleet in, in each uh, uh, node year. And uh, we also showed the uh, uh, optimized transmission lines connections between different areas because we divided the, the, the whole China into different regions. And uh, we also, uh, basically we can also see the energy flow of uh, each year from, from different energy. And also the, the total cost, like investment and uh, uh, 
is definitely the stranded cost. That means uh, some some technologies uh, are, are stranded because uh, carbon uh, constraint. So so here are some some summary. So the planning horizon is from uh, 2018 to 2050, and the 14 plus one power generation technologies and uh, to increase the spatial and temporal resolution. We divided the whole China into 17 regions and uh, uh, 96 times slides. I will show you later. So, so this is just an illustration about uh, uh, the, the space uh, division. So the reason we do this is because we want to, to increase uh, the technical accuracy. That means uh, power generation uh, can be uh, uh, not necessary to be generated in, in the local area. It can be transmitted by, by uh, transmission lines. So uh, in, our, in our modeling, uh, we considered all existing uh, long distance transmission lines and uh, also some plant transmission lines after to the year 2030. And then later after 2030, because there's no further plan. So our, uh, we, uh, our model can uh, assume any two regions can be connected with, with transmission lines. And then the optimization will select uh, automatically uh, which one will come true, which connection will come true. So this is uh, our uh, approach to treat with this uh, uh, spatial uh, distribution. And then uh, to increase uh, the temporal accuracy, uh, we divided each year into four seasons. And uh, uh, for each season, there are one typical day that, that's uh, including 24 hours. So, so, for, so for each year, we have uh, 96 time slices in total. And uh, from the year 2018 to 2050. So, and because uh, the time to, uh, interval is about one hour, so it is, uh, so this, uh, the results will be nearly, uh, can nearly uh, reflect the power balance. It is not only uh, the, the total amount of uh, power generation balance, it is uh, very, uh, uh, quite accurate to be a power balance. And if, if also for, for, for because of this uh, one uh, diagonal uh, simulation, so we can reflect the, 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 the resources change like wind and solar uh, in a day. And also we considered uh, uh, oh, also um, the power demand uh, change along along uh, along the day, and uh, there are also some some detailed uh, descriptions about unit com uh, commitment, like uh, for different uh, technology behavior. And here are a list of, of technologies we considered in our modeling. So we, we, uh, so basically, so the approach is uh, general. So we can uh, uh, divide it. We can accommodate any any uh, technology uh, you want to consider. In in our case, in our case, we considered uh, a different uh, coal power plant with different uh, uh, parameter levels, and then. Uh, the retrofit of CC, CCS, so for coal power plant, and then NGCC for just natural gas to combine cycle, the nuclear, uh, hydropower, wind, wind power, uh, uh, offshore, onshore, and the wind power offshore, and the uh, PV uh, is cent uh, with central power station, and the uh, photovoltaic with a, a distributed uh, uh, existence. And then they also consider uh, the bi biomass firing. So these are the 14 technologies we considered. Then the, the one we plussed is, uh, later I will show that, we, we considered uh, we, uh, uh, we add one more technology that's a partial 
uh, biogas, uh, bioenergy uh, power generation with CCS. That means uh, uh, biomass can be mixed uh, into the uh, power plant with coal together uh, uh, up to 20 percent, and then conduct uh, CCS, which captured 90 90 percent of uh, uh, carbon. But uh, the whole be whole carbon behavior could be negative. And then the we use this uh, superstructure uh, superstructure um, uh, approach to describe different uh, investment uh, uh, decisions. So for each technology, there are four uh, selections. Uh, there are four uh, uh, there are four selection options. The first one is uh, to build new 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 unit. The second is to retrofit with CCS. The third is uh, to retire when 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 the design life uh, reached. And then the fourth selection is that to retire before the design life. So, so for for each tech, for each uh, uh, unit, there's a memory. So we, we considered from 2018 to uh, 2050 for for each unit and uh, uh, describe their fortune. And then the, the whole the whole model will do optimization to select which which one uh, which which option is uh, 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 practical. And uh, there are also some details about uh, uh, unit commitment for the time for the uh, time limit. I, uh, I don't talk uh, in detail. And uh, uh, what I want to say, or I forgot to say, that uh, we also considered uh, uh, power uh, storage storage technologies. They are also com com competing with other technolo technologies to minimize uh, the cost of, of uh, the whole society. And so, this, uh, so in summary, this kind of modeling is quite powerful. So we can, um, in, we can, assume, uh, we can uh, calculate the regional capacity expansion uh, for different uh, regions. We can uh, uh, set it two regions and to use optimization to select which one will survive. And we can also, uh, this, uh, although it's a long-term uh, planning, but uh, it's based on the diurnal balance, balance. So we can, we know the power energy flow for, for each day, for each hour, up to uh, for, for about 30 years. And then we can also show the long-term uh, carbon emission behavior of different uh, regions, which will be helpful to make uh, uh, carbon policies and uh, 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 especially the carbon market uh, rule. So after the methodology introduction, I want uh, so we we, we we set up four scenarios. Uh, the their business as usual. That means uh, by 2020, non fossil energy share will be 15 15 percent and. Uh, uh, original NDC target is uh, uh, by 2030, non fossil energy share will be 20%. Then we proposed some enhanced NDC scenario. That means uh, to reach uh, uh, now, uh, the, share, the share of non fossil energy will reach 25% by 2030, and uh, 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 the, the share of non fossil energy will reach 50% by 2050. And then for the for this uh, two two degree scenario and the one point five uh, 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 scenario, we use carbon budget to define uh, to to constrain the the the, the uh, trajectory. So, so so here are the numbers. I don't read them. And uh, uh, later I will show. Uh, now I show you some results. So from this uh, picture, you can see that. Uh, the, the bottom line with the, the, uh, the bottom dash line is a trajectory for uh, power sector coming emission up to the, to the year 2020 in alignment with the target, uh, two, two degree target. And uh, you can simulate, uh, simulate, uh, see that uh, the policy scenario and the enhanced policy scenario cannot meet the requirement of a Paris Agreement. 
and uh, we also simulate uh, the action uh, timing for uh, data alignment with a two, de two degree scenario. So that means uh, uh, curve one, curve one is uh, early action. Curve two is a two stage acceleration. And the curve three represent late react, uh, action. That means uh, to increase carbon emission for, uh, for some time and then uh, to decrease immediately. You can see that um, the curve one is much more uh, smooth and relaxed compared to, to the other two options. And then for the for, for, for the curve three with a uh, late action, that means uh, don't accelerate the adaption for renewable energy and uh, non-possible energy. Then after 2030, the, the trajectory will be very ab abrupt. That represents that, represents that uh, a lot of coal power plants should be closed quickly in the short term. And uh, that uh, could uh, cause uh, much more uh, danger, re social risk. And uh, uh, is a green line, means uh, represent the carbon emission tra trajectory uh, for, for 1.5 degree scenario. You, you can easily see that it is a very abrupt. Even we accelerate uh, once before 2030, but uh, then later we need a much uh, much more abrupt uh, uh, decrease of carbon emissions that represent a very uh, quick clo uh, closure of coal power plants and a lot of uh, stranded asset uh, cost loss. And uh, here uh, I show some uh, the power capacity uh, estimation. So for the uh, policy and enhanced policy uh, scenario, the installed capacity will be around 4,500 4, gigawatt. And then for, for, for the two degree scenario, uh, the, the required installation capacity was around, is around uh, 5,500 gigawatt. And there is a slight difference between uh, uh, high hydraulic uh, scenario, high nuclear scenario, but they, they didn't, they didn't, they doesn't make much difference. And then uh, for early action, uh, for late action, there are also some some slight differences in the in the power capacity composition, but uh, cost were quite different. And then for for this one point five. Uh, degree scenario, the total installed capacity will be five six thousand five hundred uh, gigawatt. That's about three times more than current um, current uh, uh, capacity mix. And uh, uh, from all these pictures, you can also see that even uh, to to, to uh, the 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 share. Of non fossil energy uh, power capacity is uh, is in uh, in major is a uh, major major compensation. So all the, uh, the even for the for the policy and the non uh, for enhanced policy scenarios that cannot meet the targets of uh, Paris Agreement, but uh, the share of non fossil energy power is also sixty to seventy percent. And uh, another thing I want to see is that uh, the residual capacity, uh, co capacity will be quite different from policy to two degree scenario and to 1.5 degree scenario. And uh, to, uh, this uh, is a result of a cost comparison. Then, as I mentioned, that different technologies in our modeling are competing in each other uh, to, to reach a minimum. Um, uh, to minimum cost for the whole society. So, so we also made uh, this uh, uh, sensitivity uh, analysis. So if CCS could be cheaper, then the, the, uh, the amount of co-power uh, co with the CCS could, could increase. 
so the so the uh, rule is that with more with more bank backs and the co and the co plus CCS with more uh, backs and the co uh, plus uh, CCS the uh, more co power will, will survive and vice versa. And then here, the show, uh, this picture shows the power generation amount. I think that's basically different, uh, 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 similar to, to capacity uh, share. So the, it's no wonder that in the two degree and the uh, 1.5 degrees scenario, uh, power uh, non-fossil energy power generation will be nine, more than 90%. And among them, uh, the variable renewable energy share will be more than 60%. That will be a, a very big uh, challenge to the power system, power grid system. And then here, just give some summary about uh, uh, what's the difference between between the policy, enhanced policy, two degree and uh, one point degree scenario. So, so one can see that uh, with higher carbon uh, uh, reduction target, then more renewable energy, more CCS will be, will be needed. And uh, so in two degree scenario, about uh, six, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 gigatons CCS will be required. And in 1.5 degree scenario, about one gigatons per year uh, CCS capacity will be needed. So, so that's why I'm saying CCS is, is inevitable if we want to keep the uh, cheaper and uh, make use of some fossil energy facility. And that there are also uh, a big increase of uh, long distance transmission uh, requirement. That's about, uh, I think, uh, two or three times more than, uh, oh, six to seven times more than current uh, level. And then for the uh, power storage capacity requirement, uh, with, with a, a higher uh, carbon reduction uh, the requirement, the more, uh, because more renewable energy will be, will be uh, deployed. So the, the power uh, storage capacity will be two, uh, doubled or tripled. And as, as you all, I think, as you know, um, to do some planning is one thing and uh, to, to be practical and uh, effective, that's another thing. So in China, uh, coal power is the majority in the, in the power generation uh, sector. So how to deal with uh, this uh, coal power plant correctly, that will influence, be, has the impact, big impact on, on the fire. On the feasibility, on the on the real uh, consequences. So in our modeling, we optimized. Uh, I don't know how to do that. English. So uh, we we deal with the coal power plant very carefully and trying to uh, avoid uh, value losses. So here are some uh, even even though there are. Uh, Power plant should uh, have to be rot uh, retired, have to retire early before their design life. So uh, on, on the right, on the right uh, diagram, you can see that uh, for the two degree scenario, uh, I would say that uh, the, the average uh, the life loss will be one one year for for. Uh, one point something year for for two degree scenario and uh, two point two years uh, life every lo uh, life uh, loss for one point five degree scenario and then the stranded SS is a quite uh, uh, impressive so for one point five degree scenario the stranded SS loss will be more than six thousand uh, six hundred uh, billion RMB and the, for the two two degree scenario. Uh, it is amount. It is around thirty three to uh, one thousand uh, to one hundred six sixty uh, billion yuan in between, and then the difference is, is because is due to 
early action than late action. Apparently, early early action will uh, can avoid uh, more uh, strategic assets uh, loss. So this also gives the implication that it is quite dangerous, quite risky to build new coal power plant. So it should be very cautious. And uh, we also estimated uh, the total uh, investment uh, requirement to, uh, if, uh, so from business as usual, uh, the scenario uh, to progress to this two degree scenario, uh, one, I think around the, the cost for, for one ton CO2 is about uh, three, uh, 300 yuan. And then if we go further uh, to reach this uh, 1.5 degree scenario, then the increased uh, cost for per ton uh, CO2 will be uh, doubled, or even 2 .3, I think uh, roughly 2.3 or 2.4 times more expensive. And finally, I would like to, uh, as I mentioned, that coal is uh, coal power. Uh, is quite sensitive in China, so, so we, we should find the right way to deal with it. So, so one idea occurred in my group is that we we, uh, we propose this technology PBEX. That means partial bioenergy carbon capture and storage. That means, uh, as I mentioned earlier, co-faring of up to twenty percent of carbon neutral biomass with coal, and then uh, uh, to retrofit the power plant with CCS. That means. Uh, and uh, the net emission will be uh, negative. And with this, with this uh, technology, uh, we, we made some estimation about the whole, uh, the impact on the whole result. So here are some uh, examples. So the early required uh, retired capacity will be decreased, so no wonder. And then the average lifetime this is the photo the corresponding to 1.5 degree scenario. So the, the lifetime could be increased by 0.2 years. So, so the number is not large, but so the, the corresponding uh, value is very large. And then uh, the code, the, the code power plant, uh, code uh, capacity could be uh, increased a little bit, a, bit, a little bit, and then the strength asset could be decreased without influ influencing the, the carbon behavior. And then uh, there are also uh, uh, some uh, gave much less pressure on wind and the solar uh, capacity uh, development. And uh, accordingly, also much le less pressure on the, the need for storage capacity requirement. And uh, the total share of uh, the variable uh, renewable energy also decreased. That means that that's a good, good uh, uh, result for, 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 for the safety and uh, stability of power grid. And then the total cost can also be decreased by 2.6% because, because uh, uh, there are some additional for, uh, cost for, for coal, coal power plant related uh, retrofit, but the, the, the cost for wind and solar uh, and st uh, storage investment will be decreased. So the total is a uh, uh, decrease cost. And based on these studies, we gave uh, some, some policy uh, recommendations uh, that uh, supported to, to government finally. I think the basic idea is that uh, continuous expansion of uh, uh, renewable energy. That's uh, uh, that has um, for, for the increased power for increased power demand. Uh, we we recommend that that should be uh, majority of the increased power generation demand should be uh, met by uh, renewable energy, and uh, but to accommodate such a big amount of uh, renewable energy. We, we need uh, technology uh, to develop a technology like like energy storage and also the stability technologies for power grid, and uh, we also recommend that uh, 
uh, no no new coal power plant should be uh, built in the uh, uh, in future, and uh, we also consider should consider uh, a careful technology, a te careful uh, procedures to orderly phase out of coal power, and then technologies like CCS and the uh, the PBX, PBCCS are uh, very very important. To decrease the, to to minimize the, the the transition cost, so that should be started and uh, uh, developed faster. And uh, then, because a lot of uh, investment are required, so the guarantee of required investment are also important. So this uh, roughly what I want uh, I presented. So thank you for your attention. Hopefully, I keep uh, keep time. Having trouble unmuting myself. Yes, that was outstanding. It was a very, very, very clearly um, presented and uh, very comprehensive. So this is our Q and A session. Um, raise your hand um, electronically if you want to ask a question. I I, I do have a, a kind of a big picture question myself, but I want to. Um, I think I'm going to uh, hold off on it and have and have a few more uh, specific questions first. Mike uh, McElroy, I think you wanted to ask something. Yes. Yeah, so first of all, thank you very much for uh, for a, a comprehensive and uh, excellent uh, presentation of a very complicated uh, problem. I, I have a couple of comments and uh, and then a question. Um, we we as you as you know as, we, as we've discussed uh, have been doing a fair amount of work on the enormous potential for offshore wind in China. The fact that uh, China's uh, offshore ocean uh, depths, uh, you go out to the end of the economic zone and you still are less than 60 meters of water depth. And with the new technology, the possibility of bringing a very large amount of wind generated electricity onshore is an amazing new possibility, which changes a lot of issues in terms of the distribution and the requirements. The other comment, which uh, I think you know about this is that uh, we, we have been doing a fair amount of work recently uh, here at Harvard with our Chinese colleagues on the possibility of a major hydrogen uh, uh, industry in, uh, in China. And in particular, we have a paper that just is about to appear that shows that you can produce hydrogen, green hydrogen, that is, uh, with, uh, with uh, curtailed wind in northern China, cost competitive uh, and cheaper than industrial sources. So that's another issue that I think is worth, uh, worth commenting on. I have two questions. Uh, one is, I would love to hear a little bit more from you about uh, how you visualize the cost for carbon capture and sequestration, and, you know, not just uh, from a coal-fired plant, but from a combination of biomass and coal. What do we know about the cost there? And the final thing is, how about the possibility of uh, a different form of, uh, of uh, power generation from, for example, a combination of hydrogen, uh, green hydrogen, and, uh, and, and even ammonia? Uh, recognizing that Japan's uh, plans for uh, for decarbonizing its economy has a major role in envisaged for hydrogen. So thank you again for a wonderful talk. Uh, so thank, uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, so I think your comments uh, uh, is very, very uh, uh, about uh, offshore uh, offshore uh, uh, wind power. I think yes, it is a. Uh, 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 very uh, very important to be developed, and uh, uh, my group is also doing some study on that, and, uh, uh, and also uh, for our modeling for, for for the modeling the general is a versatile and uh, general. So so uh, now we didn't uh, we will consider uh, offshore wind already, but uh, uh, if you want to study that carefully uh, specifically, that's also possible to use uh, our model, and. Uh, that's uh, the second question about hydrogen. Yes, it should be studied. And uh, in, in our study, in, in this modeling, uh, in this work, we did not consider the uh, hydrogen as storage. But in the future, it, is, it could be an option and it should be studied. And for the CCS cost, uh, we, 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 we have a cost assum assumption uh, in, in our modeling for all technologies I mentioned. And uh, uh, 
I, I can't remember right now because I'm too too much excited. <laughs> But uh, the, if you like, I can, I can uh, uh, send you some data on that. And then for the for the hydrogen, uh, uh, we have another uh, work uh, that's about whole China's uh, uh, energy system modeling, and uh, it was conducted by by the Tianxiong, uh, one of my PhD student who started by Dan Shrug for, for 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 half a year. He had made a very good uh, work on uh, on the whole energy system, including uh, the hydrogen infrastructure, and he considered uh, uh, the blue 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 carb, uh, blue hydrogen and also uh, green hydrogen. And uh, I think your idea is, is great uh, uh, to use the curtailed uh, wind and solar power. Uh, to to make a green hydrogen that uh, that's uh, cheaper and uh, 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 can can create a big difference. Hopefully, my poor English can <laughs> can be understood. Thank thank you very much. Okay, uh, John Holdren. Hello, John. Thank you. Uh, hello, Lee Jung. Very nice to see you, and thank you for that excellent uh, presentation. Uh, I have many questions, but given how many hands are up, I will only ask uh, some of them. Uh, my first question uh, relates to your uh, reference early in the talk to the assumptions in your study about CCS and CO2 sink. You talked about the assumptions on CCS later in the talk, uh, but you didn't, I think, talk about uh, what you assumed in your studies about carbon dioxide sinks, uh, and unless you were including in that uh, the bioenergy CCS. But my, my assumption is not that you looked at some other CO2 sinks. And my question is uh, what those were and what their potential contributions were in your uh, analysis. Uh, a, a second question and a much harder one uh, relates to uh, China's export of coal burning power plants. I have seen some studies that suggest that the uh, possible exports of coal burning power plants uh, would largely offset the emissions reductions that China is planning domestically. Uh, do you think that's right? And do you think if it is that there will be in the future some reconsideration by China of its plans for exporting coal burning power plants? Okay. So thank you, John. Uh, for the first question, um, uh, I, I forgot, uh, I did not mention the, the, the preconditions. So, uh, biomass is uh, expected with a uh, large, with a great expectation. So in, in China, uh, if we don't uh, grow energy energy uh, plants, uh, so the, only to use agriculture and the forest uh, residues, the uh, total amount of uh, biomass uh, is uh, about uh, um, 0 0.6 billion. Uh, times co-equivalent, uh, so yeah, yeah, so that's a t uh, that, uh, the total number uh, that can be used for energy purpose. Uh, so in our modeling, in our uh, in my study, I just mentioned, we assume that uh, about uh, uh, one o six million tons can be used for power generation. That's the only one six one six of the, the total uh, available uh, available uh, resources. So, so, so my result is corresponding to a 106 million tons uh, biomass uh, resources. And then for, for the CO2 thing, uh, so besides uh, CO2, besides uh, uh, CCS, uh, uh, capture, uh, you, I, I think you're talking about uh, the natural thing. So, so uh, I, I remember the number, it, 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 we have a report, we have a, as I mentioned, either for the first uh, part of my uh, my presentation, we have a, a report that will be published. Uh, is on the uh, publication process, so it, uh, there's, there's a lot of data inside. 
as far as I remember, I think uh, the natural uh, sink will assume in the two degree scenario is about uh, 700, uh, uh, that means 700, 700 million times. And for the 1.5 degree scenario, uh, there's, there must be much more effort for, for, for planning trees. So that's around uh, uh, 1.3. Billion tons common uh, absorption. Hopefully, that's uh, what was you are asking me. And then for the for the for the uh, coal power uh, export, <laughs> that's a, a very difficult question. So I did some study, and I also uh, read uh, an article read by uh, written by uh, by Professor Gallagher. He has he has a database, so so the, I published some some uh, paper. Uh, so uh, uh, according to that paper, the total uh, Chinese uh, investment ownership, I I, I cannot see that. I don't know how to express that in English. But the total amount, uh, Chinese Chinese uh, China Chinese owned. Uh, power plant, coal power plant is around 2,000 uh, megawatt, uh, 20, uh, 20 gigawatt. So that's not 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 really large. So compared to the to the whole uh, coal power plant built in in, in the, the same period. Uh, but there's even though there's uh, coal power plant can emit more uh, CO2. In, in their life uh, uh, lifetime, so uh, so I would say that uh, currently, uh, from my observation, uh, China government is making uh, more uh, rules to 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 deal with this coal power plant export, and also uh, the banks, the the, the financial financial organizations are also uh, started. To, uh, to emphasize the financial risk for 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 investing in in, in carbon intensive uh, facilities, and uh, uh, I I think you can it, uh, the, 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 you can you will see a lot of. Um, more uh, a lot more. Climate uh, the export, but uh, the one point I want I forgot to say that um, the reason I'm talking about is two thousand megawatts because uh, uh, I think that the the, the, the receiver the, the, the local countries made the made the, the order, so so some Chinese uh, companies are only the, the supplier. So even though we should change. I think I think uh, the such kind of situation will, uh, will will be changed soon. Okay. Thank um, you. Our time is is getting tight. I want to squeeze in a few more questions, and I want to give some of the younger uh, people a chance. Uh, a student, uh, Haiyang Lin. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. And uh, thank you, Professor Li Zheng, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm a waiting fellow here at Howard Chan Project. I have two questions. Uh, first, I would like to ask, do you think that the electricity demand pattern variation in the future will impact the mean results of your study? Uh, because we know that in the future, the, uh, there will be more, uh, electri uh, electri uh, more sectors will be electrified, like the transportation sector, there will be more electric vehicle charging, and there will be more uh, uh, electricity demand for air conditioning. And also maybe in the Northern part of the China, there will be uh, heat, uh, electricity demand for heat pumps to provide uh, uh, heating for the uh, households. And so do you think those kind of uh, electricity demand pattern will impact the, 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 the results of the uh, power system structure. And a follow question about this is, uh, we know that the power structure uh, and uh, the, uh, the rule, the 
coal fire plants and natural gas fire plants are trying to uh, uh, to make the uh, power system more stable. Uh, they need to achieve the unique commitment and also the uh, reserve and reliability requirement for the power system. So do you think uh, under, uh, under a more uh, variable uh, electricity demand pattern, will the hydrogen infra infrastructure play, um, play a major role in this? Will, will hydrogen technology be became, uh, become a uh, uh, game changer to this? Because we know that uh, water electrolysis and fuel cell technologies, they, they could uh, do a, a similar job like the coal-fired plants and natural gas, natural gas plants. And do you think that under a, a high, high friction or uh, renewable powers, the power system could use uh, uh, hydrogen technology to, to, uh, to realize a very uh, stable and reliable power system. Thank you. Okay, I'll try to answer your question. So maybe I answer the last question at the first. So the, um, uh, for, about having the future, I I will I will say that uh, uh, that could 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 be a game changer. So the, 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 uh, there's a lot of questions. Uh, the uh, and it says that it says that uh, the uh, in the future, uh, electricity and the hydrogen will be the two major medias for for for, for final energy use. So so uh, and I want to see that hydrogen is not only used for transportation; it is expected in a lot of areas like uh, uh, building like uh, uh, steel making and like uh, uh, other uh, purposes for, for the hard to, to abate uh, industry. So it is expected, but there are still some uncertainties. And uh, uh, that for the power, for the power generation, uh, uh, power, power storage uh, using this form of hydrogen, I think that that's also uh, could happen. Could could uh, could could be could could happen, and uh, from our study, it says that uh, when the penetration of, of variable renewable energy uh, reach thirty percent, then you need a uh, complete uh, need some uh, special change of uh, your power grid. So that's uh, and that. Uh, that to to stable uh, to stabilize uh, the power grid, you need a combination of technologies, including uh, power storage, like hydrogen. But you also need a lot of other technologies to uh, uh, to uh, stay, to stable, to stabilize uh, the power grid. And uh, so that's why, uh, although the wind and solar uh, wind and solar power. You uh, decrease the cost, unit cost decrease a lot, but the, the whole system cost will uh, uh, increase because because we need uh, to change the power uh, grid structure and uh, 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 greatly to, to to stabilize the power plant. And then for your first question, I think you 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 uh, you already answered that. So I think uh, electricity. Electrification, electrification is a, a certain direction to go. So, so I, uh, I did not see the number, but in my presentation, I, I, um, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, for the two, two degree scenario, the, electricity, the electrification of the final energy stack uh, demand will be 55% compared to about 26% today. And for the 1.5 degree, uh, because we need uh, to use uh, to, to be more efficient. So the electric, uh, electrification uh, rate will be 60, 68%, that's very big. And uh, uh, then the electrification uh, sectors, including uh, electrical vehicles, including uh, steel, steel making from, from uh, uh, arc, arc, arc furnace. And also, uh, as you mentioned, uh, build, building heat, building heating is a big problem in China because we have a very uh, uh, 
cold winter. <coughs> so the, so the uh, and the, uh, power consumption for for building could increase a lot, but uh, uh, there are. It is the, the, the future is not quite certain yet. So there's, there are still a, a lot of debate in China about how to solve the how to how to provide heating and the air conditioning uh, heating mainly uh, for for the buildings and whether the southern China uh, what's the best way for for southern China uh, to heat to heat the buildings. Hopefully, I answer your question. So Li Zheng. Um... We still have some more questions, and I, I know it's getting late there. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you're willing to do a couple more. Um, is, is it okay, or are you anxious to? <laughs> I'm fine. Oh, you're fine. Okay, so um, uh, Michael Davidson. Hi, Li Lao Shi. Nice to, nice to see you. Uh, oh, my. Very, uh, inter a very interesting talk. Uh, so I, I had a question, since you're a coal plant uh, expert, I'm curious what assumptions you had for flexibility of the coal plants. And we know that that's going to be important, as you mentioned, as you get above 30% and even up to these 60% shares of variable renewables. And it's also going to um, interact with the modeling assumptions. Here you're choosing one representative day per season. And that might, um, in some sense, underestimate the demand for flexibility from these coal plants. So two-part question there. Um, very curious to hear your thoughts. So I, I didn't fully understand your question. So you're talking about the flexibility assumption? Yes, for the coal plants. What are you assuming for, say, minimum outputs, uh, ramp up time do you have to assume that you have to do additional flexibility retrofits on the existing coal fleet in order to meet those uh, shares of uh, variable renewable energy uh, yes we, uh, we did that so uh, uh, i think there are two uh, two uh, twofold uh, uh, assumptions first one is that uh, the, the uh, operation uh, range of coal power plants can be changed so, so we can we that can be regarded as a one uh, retrofit measure. So I think we can assume forty percent, thirty percent, or even twenty percent. That's that's one uh, one treatment. Then the other treatment is uh, uh, economic cost uh, uh, competition. So, so the result I'm showing today is uh, assuming that uh, cope. Uh, coal power plant uh, are, not, are not competitive if they cannot run uh, it, uh, upper than, than 4,000 hours. That means they should be retired. But uh, for this, uh, 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 my students are also doing a new work that we, we, we just uh, released uh, the constraint for the operating hours, for op operating hours. And we found that uh, if we make the coal power plant uh, to run, to, to be run in, in, in less than 1,000 hours. Uh, they can replace some certain demand for, for, for power storage and uh, uh, quite economic. So if they are equipped with, with CCS, that could, could be a solution for, uh, for the uh, fluctuation uh, uh, preserving. I don't know how the word tackling uh, uh, intermittency of, of, of uh, wind, a large penetration of, of uh, intermittent uh, power. But we can discuss later if, if I uh, didn't understand your question correctly. You know me. <laughs> uh, Jose Barria, did you, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, thank you. I'll, uh, it's a very uh, fast question. This is a great presentation, but I wonder about direct air capture uh, discussions and whether that's going to be part of the a future technological landscape in China. Uh, in China, we had uh, some groups are, are studying this direct air capture. And uh, uh, from uh, uh, personally, from my, myself, I'm also encouraging 
it's, it, it'd be started, it'd be listed in, the, in the some uh, uh, scientific research programs. And uh, because the, the cost is still high, so, so you, you our modeling, we did not uh, consider that yet. But I noticed that uh, uh, in Princeton, in Princeton, uh, Eric Lassen and, and his team started uh, the, uh, the net zero scenario for, for the US. And uh, I think the, the result is quite similar, to, uh, the trend is quite similar to our study. And uh, they considered uh, uh, DAC in their modeling. That cost, besides the, the, the power, the electricity demand for to meet uh, the, the daily life. So if the DAC are, uh, DAC are employed, are deployed, then the power, uh, the electricity demand will be increased very large, very large. So uh, I think uh, we didn't we, we didn't uh, model DAC in my in, in our work, but I can expect the same effect. The power uh, demand requirement will be uh, very large. So currently, uh, we assume five, 15 trillion, 15 trillion uh, uh, kilowatt hour uh, will be required by the year 2050 for 1.5 degree scenario. And uh, if we see DAC uh, will be applied, I, I assume that it could be 25 trillion. I, I'm not sure we have enough resources, renewable resources for that. Okay, so uh, we've got to get uh, wrapping up here. I think uh, uh, just two more questions, uh, Xu Qing Gao. Hi, hello. Uh, thank you, Professor Li Zheng. Uh, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. I have one question regarding the renewable energy policy. Uh, without subsidies and the fade in tariff policy, renewable can't compete with coal in market price. But I heard that subsidies and the fade in pol uh, tariff policy for wind and the solar power is officially removed at the end of 2020 and the beginning of this year, 2021. So if this is ongoing the policy changes, so would you please introduce what the new incentive policy and the long-term long guidelines uh, set up in the China's 14th five-year plan for accelerating decarbonization in energy sector and that also can balance in the market-oriented reform and the government administrative planning. Okay, so uh, I, I didn't plan the question, but I guess uh, your question is about, uh, I just gave you some, some, uh, some numbers. So the, uh, President Xi uh, in China's uh, uh, NDP pledge, he, 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 he uh, announced that by 2030, uh, China will develop uh, more than uh, 1,200 gigawatt uh, wind and the, uh, solar power. So that's, that's a very serious target. And uh, I, although you are talking about some subsidies, I'm not, uh, uh, I, I don't care. I, I'm not very familiar with the, the details of that, but uh, uh, my, my hunch, my overall estimation that uh, President Xi's uh, uh, requirement is a, is a big policy, is the, the toughest policy for, for developing renewable energy. So, so uh, for, for example, for this, uh, for this year, for example, uh, our major power uh, generation companies are now moving moving up. They, uh, they all they all announced uh, they all announced their, their, their renewable target in, 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 in this year and in five years. And uh, I think I think this uh, uh, one thousand two hundred gigawatt uh, target will be uh, overpassed by the year twenty thirty. With or without this subsidy, so I, I don't want to talk the details. Now I'm I'm very tired. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm I reserved the last question for myself. Um, you mentioned in some of your last slides about how influential the cross regional power transmission capacity was uh, in getting to your, you know, your lowest emissions scenarios, your 1.5 scenario and so forth. And it was one of your recommendations about uh, in your, in your kind of um, recommendation slide about interregional power transmission as being very, very important. This is stepping out of your model a little bit, but uh, asking you uh, whether you think there is any realistic potential for um, uh, transnational regional interconnection to serve those same benefits, not just for China, but for other countries. So, uh, you know, we know about Liu Zhenya's promotion of a global uh, um, uh, interconnected power system, which seems pretty uh, ambitious to a lot of us, but regional interconnection does seem at least technically feasible. And I'm kind of curious what you think, whether we're talking about primarily to Southeast Asia, um, to um, East Asian, you know, Korea, potentially Japan, or um, possibly even um, um, Central Asia, whether you think that is a legitimate prospect by 2050 for increased uh, interconnection with the power systems of other countries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so apparently you are very familiar with uh, with uh, 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 about these trends and having situations. So um, a, a short answer is that technically that's possible and helpful. So for for every part of renewable energy that can be used by the human being, to help the carbon reduction. So so this uh, transnational transmission. But certainly increase the supply of uh, of, uh, uh, of zero carbon power, zero carbon energy, that will help. And uh, so technically, and uh, technically that's also possible because uh, Lujanya's technology is, uh, I think, is uh, uh, practical and can be applicable. Then the problem is uh, about uh, I don't know how to say that in English. Uh, and then redim That means uh, I think that because of political reasons. The politics, there, yeah. The, because of political reasons, there, there are also uh, there, there are still a lot of uh, obstacles. Right. To realize that, but I hope uh, in the north, 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 uh, east uh, Asia. There right. could be some, some successful uh, examples to, to prove the feasibility of this, uh, this kind of solution. Yeah. Okay. So it's a great. So the, I, I saw Dan Strack uh, the, the, on, uh, on the list and he, he read my, my uh, he gave a lot of advices to my lecture. Yeah. I was going to call on him, but he he apparently had to leave. Uh, he dropped off of the he dropped off of the uh, session, so I'm sorry. Okay, okay, no problem. He he gave me a lot of advices. Yeah, I'm I'm I'll have to send him a note. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, this was really very very good. It was an excellent excellent discussion too. The presentation was uh, uh, wonderful, but a lot of really good questions and discussion and and. We appreciate you sort of hanging on uh, later than you probably anticipated um, and uh, for staying up late to talk to us, but we, we, we all learn a lot and, and thank you very much. And let's give a... Thank you, thank you for, for the chance. So I'm very honored. So hopefully, hope we can, we can uh, work further in the future. Yeah. We certainly we'll do that. Of course. So please, uh, thank, so thank, thank you, you so much. Chris. Thank you, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, John. And thanks. And, uh, my... Thanks everybody for France. participating. New friends out of France. Thank you very much. <laughs> so see you in the future. Okay.